Welcome to the second video in my Dumb Phone Diaries uh, series exploring switching from a smartphone to a feature phone or what we know as a dumb phone. In this video, this is kind of a two-part video, you're going to have an unboxing as well as kind of a road test video to kind of give you my first impressions of the Light Phone 2. Let's get into it. All right, so I am really excited. This is the box that came from the Light Phone Company, and I'm going to unbox this bad boy with you right now. Oh, boy. Okay, lots of good stuff here. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So we have our Light Phone here shipping stuff. What's nice is they give you this kind of walkthrough um, for how to get started with the light phone and where to go next to get signed up. So we have a SIM card, we have a case, a phone, and a SIM card. So let's get this open. First we'll start with the case. One thing that I really do like is that they have all this paper uh, packaging, which is great. A little light phone case. This gives you any indication of how big this phone is. I have been waiting very impatiently for this phone and I'm glad that it is finally here. Just a good feeling about that. Ta da! I love it. Okay, so here we have our charging cord. Our little SIM. Definitely gonna spill my coffee. Right. Well, I'll put this next to my smartphone. I'm actually filming with my smartphone. So uh, we can kind of get an indication of how small this really is. Because lots of people say it's small, but it's hard to really understand until you see it in person. But you can see this is my flip phone. There you go. So this really illustrates the size of these phones. Of course, this is an older iPhone. I think it's an iPhone X S maybe. Uh, and then we have our flip phone here, which you can see this screen is actually this just a hair bigger than this screen is. If I go into my text messaging, this can show you how much space I actually have to view messages. So there's lots of scrolling that happens there. So I don't have messages here. I've actually cleared them, but you can kind of see between the two what that really looks like. They're different screens. I am really enjoying the black and white of this phone, this new light phone. Uh, so uh, I will have a review that is more in depth about this and using this phone. But you can kind of see how the size stacks up. Just for reference, I have these pen and a pencil here so you can kind of see how that looks right next to this little phone. If you didn't check out my first video, you may want to go there first. Check it out. The link should be up above for that video. This is kind of an ongoing exploration um, to just summarize. I started with a flip phone and now I'm moving to the light phone too. I'm really excited about this phone and I think that you might get some real value out of this video because there are some things I think because my journey started with a flip phone and now it's moved into uh, this light phone too, there are things that I experienced that maybe a user going from a smartphone directly to the light phone isn't going to think about or experience. And so this might be really important for you if you're making that decision to make the leap. In this portion of the video, I'm going to be talking about pros and cons and then just kind of summarizing some thoughts for you. I will put timestamps down below if you're an impatient sort 
or there's something specific that you're kind of looking for. So check those out if you wanna just go to those places. While I have your attention, if you get value out of this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and let me know your thoughts about this whole process of transitioning from a smartphone to a feature phone. I'm really interested to know what you think about it as well. Can you make the leap? Since my channel is primarily an art channel, you might be wondering, why are you even doing videos about this? But I think it's really important because as a creative, I'm distracted all the time by my phone. And again, you can check out the first video in this series. It kind of goes into more of the reasons as to why I have made this switch. But I know that I'm not alone in this distracted period. And I think for creatives, it's really important to do the work as opposed to looking at Instagram and Pinterest and all these other things that take our focus away from creating and crafting. Now I realize YouTube is another social media, but I feel like YouTube is the place that you can go when you're ready to look at content. YouTube isn't sucking me in in a way that I can't concentrate and I don't know, it's just, for me it's a little bit different, whereas Instagram or Facebook, I can really lose a lot of time being on my phone. What I love about this phone is it is legible. It's black and white. It doesn't have anything that lights up my brain where I'm dazzled by the colors. It's just straightforward. It's like reading a piece of paper for me. You can actually make the screen black with white lettering or white with black lettering. Um, I love that. I think it's a, an interesting approach and it kind of gives your eyes a break. And as somebody who works on a computer a lot of the time or who is doing small detail a lot of the time, I appreciate that. And I honestly kind of sometimes think maybe this should be called the Zen phone because it is very Zen-like. Uh, a few years ago, I used this um, writing program called Om Writer. OMM writer and it kind of had the same approach. It was very calming. There weren't a lot of bells and whistles. It had some Zen music that kind of went along with it. And this phone is very Zen like in how the tones are. Um, they're not jarring or irritating. They just I feel like there's just a notification exactly the way they should be. So it has some nice ring tones and alarm tones as well. And for the record, it is loud enough to wake you up. I was a little concerned that it might not be because I do use my uh, phone half the time for an alarm as well as a standalone alarm and it, it works really great. So let's get to the real heart of the matter as to why I got this phone, texting. So the flip phone is a nightmare for texting. And you know, if you are old enough to remember the first phones, you can remember pressing the button three times to get a letter or a number. And that's exactly what I was encountering. It might've had color. It might've had ability to get out onto the internet, but texting, I just wasn't texting people. And if you are on this journey and you've got yourself a flip phone, you will find yourself calling people a lot more. Maybe that's a good benefit. You know, you're actually communicating and connecting with people. I just found that when I really needed to have someone send me information, I had to have them email it to me. And you're gonna have to repeat yourself if you're gonna live in the flip phone kind of zone. The one thing that I, you know, I've seen a lot of people kind of complaining about the keyboard. So you have to turn the phone sideways and text. Uh, I think, I don't know if that's a programming thing that has to be that way. I have assumed that they put this keyboard this way so you could actually see the letters. And so I feel like it's pretty easy for me to see them. I do have transition lenses. Um, but it really isn't a problem to, to type on this, as well as the thing that I really love about this phone is it has the voice to text feature, which was monumental for me because it actually does a really good job of translating what you say. I don't find that I have to fix words very often. So this really works for me. It's great. Um, I just, it's kind of changed my world. <laughs>
And more than anything, not being able to text people has really felt like it's crippled me um, because a lot of times I'll have meetings and things that I just need quick information and with the other phone, I just couldn't do it. So I can't say enough good things about the texting feature on this phone. A second feature with that texting that I really like, automatic punctuation. What does that mean? That means it automatically puts a period or a question mark at the end of your sentence and you don't have to say question mark, period. I love that, so great job, Lightphone. Another pro to this phone is that I really don't think about it. I enjoy using it and so it's kind of a joy to use or when I get a text message, but it's not so jarring and annoying that it's constantly grabbing my attention. Of course, that is the whole reason that this phone exists. I feel like they've put the phone in its place. One thing that I could say is because it's so small and because you're not constantly checking it, you could forget it in a pocket or you could leave it somewhere maybe, I don't know. But it, it really is, you're not on it all the time. So it's a potential maybe con of this phone. I don't know if that's really a con. This is an iPhone XS. This is the light phone too. You can see that size difference really is substantial. But what I love about this is it fits into my wallet, my zippered wallet and I can just throw it in there, throw it in my purse, or just have the wallet, and I don't have to find a, an extra pocket to fit this into, or somewhere to stash, or carry them both around so both my hands are tied up. It really is pretty good sized. It will take a little bit of getting used to. I think if you're used to carrying around a big phone, bigger than this one, I don't know. Also, because it has Bluetooth on it, I've been able to connect it to my AirPods as well as my car. And we'll talk more about that later, but that is a feature that I find I really like, especially since the phone is so small, being able to have AirPods that you can hear on, it's kind of essential, especially if you need to be hands-free. Another thing that I think is very valuable that really sets this company apart from Apple or any other kind of company is they're kind of grassroots. And I really respect that and dig that. And being grassroots, they're always working to solve issues. Now that might be a con that you have, sometimes you have software issues, but the thing about it is you know about it with this company because they're transparent. They have a Discord channel where you can learn about this phone. You can let them know about issues that you have with the phone. You can search the Discord for anything that, you know, maybe you're having an issue with it connecting to your Bluetooth. There might be something on the Discord channel that you can find that might help you have better luck with that connection. The innovators over at Lightphone they're answering people's questions and making comments and they're letting you know when there's an update for the software. And I just love the accessibility, especially as I was waiting for my phone to arrive, I really was looking through the channel and seeing where there might be issues. They're updating this stuff all the time and I think that's wonderful. I think the other little benefit that I love with this, I mean, I mentioned this in my other video, but you're not being marketed to on this. You're not being tracked on this. This is a straight up phone that you can use for your use and you don't have to worry about, is it listening to me? It's just doing its job being a phone. I love that. One of the biggest frustrations that I had with this flip phone was that I couldn't transfer my contacts to it in any way. And it was really, a struggle so I didn't have anybody's phone number in here unless I actually called them or they called me and it was a real slog of course because of the buttons to actually put people's phone numbers in here and you couldn't put their full name in there I like to put information with people's contacts to remind me of where I met them or how I know them or God forbid I get hit by a bus and my husband has to use my phone to call people. He has some information there. This doesn't allow you to do that. 
I was able to upload my contacts from iCloud into the dashboard and I can easily edit them and it really wasn't too painful to make that happen. I really appreciate and love the fact that I was able to take my contacts from iCloud and put it into my new Lightphone 2. That is really handy. And I think if you just make that transition from a smartphone to the Lightphone 2, you might miss that appreciation factor for the ease of that. We'll also talk about this a little bit later in the video, but good job Lightphone 2. You really made my life so much easier that way. The other thing that I thought about kind of as I'm thinking about this phone is it's unassuming. I don't think that you look at this and you know what it is. It could be an MP3 player. It could be an, a little video game. You don't know. So I think because of its appearance, it might be less likely to be thefted, so to speak, or lifted. Um, it might be not as appealing to steal especially if people don't really quite understand how to operate it or what it is at first. Just a thought. Another pro about this company is how they package their phones. They use all paper products for it, so they're really living their mission by being less wasteful. And as a graphic designer and artist, I really appreciate just this packaging. I'm kind of a packaging geek. And so I do really appreciate the thought that they put into this packaging and how it all just seamlessly works together. So another pro is that this thing has navigation. Granted, I haven't used the navigation a ton, so that might be something I talk about more in my third video for this series. But when I was moving to the smartphone, that was one of the huge things that was kind of a deterrent from leaving was the GPS function, which I wound up getting an iPad with a plan so I could use that feature in the GPS because I'm traveling a little bit this year and that is kind of important when you're maneuvering around and so handy when you have a phone with you. It gives you a couple of different views for the navigation and it works with your car having that navigation functionality is really nice and important and definitely a pro for me. So as I'm trying to kind of simplify my life and reinforce with clients and friends to communicate with me through email, I do appreciate the fact that this phone sends images and things to email so you can review it later. Of course, we'd love to have it. Um, at the time that it's sent to you, but I don't think it's a deal breaker for me to be able to have it go to my email or I can check it later or if I'm sitting at my desk, I can just check it there. I think it makes it handy too because I also don't have to transfer it from the phone to my computer if I need that imagery that's being sent. So I kind of dig that. I think if you're a meme person and you send a lot of memes, this might be debilitating for you, but I don't really do memes, so it's not an issue for me. Um, I do like that aspect of it too, and I can just drive things to my email so I can review it later and store it there and not on the phone. The other thing that I really appreciate about this phone is the toolbox. It really is a toolbox, and that's really what you're supposed to use it for. And it has all the things that you might want. I really think that they've thought this out perfectly. I want an alarm on my phone. I use them throughout the day just to remind me of things or if I have an appointment to just set me up so I'm not gonna be late for the appointment. They have podcasts, which I am totally dedicated to podcasts, especially if I go for a walk. I don't wanna have to take this plus my old smartphone to listen to podcasts. It's nice that I can listen to them on this with a phone if I need to have a phone. It has a calculator on it and the, the option for music and the hotspot feature, which I actually have used quite a bit if I've needed to have a smartphone or a device with me and I don't have my iPad or my iPad is being slow, I do appreciate that there is a hotspot feature here. You know, the other thing that I found too is it charges pretty quickly. I would say like you could, within an hour, it's got a significant charge on it. So 
I do appreciate that. I know it's got a small battery. Yeah, I like that it charges quickly. And this this will be the last uh, pro in my list. I don't know if it's the last pro that pertains to this phone, but I really appreciate the dashboard. Uh, when I transferred uh, my iCloud contacts over to the dashboard, I realized that there were a lot of people in there that I don't talk to anymore, or their old contacts, or they just don't need to be in my phone. And I can easily edit them and delete them all in the same time. Also, the other thing that's interesting about the dashboard, at least as far as the phone and contacts go, is it does just have a first name, a last name, and a phone number. So it just ports over that information alone. I think that's good, especially if you're not emailing people, you don't have all that additional information there. And so I just have really enjoyed the dashboard part. It's really easy, straightforward. The website's easy to use. You're not gonna get sucked into the website and be on it forever either. Okay, now for the cons, and I do have to put a precursor here. Not all these cons necessarily apply to me, but they might be something that you need to think about as you are looking at this phone. So keep that in mind. My first con really doesn't have to do with the phone itself. It more has to do with the case for the phone. I know that you can go onto Amazon and find an additional type of case. It doesn't look like a great case either. This is probably a better case compared to it. But it has this rubber case. And I do love that it says light on the back of it. I think that's really cool. The thing I don't like about the case is this type of rubber. Um, it's soft and it's pliable, but it also attracts hair and lint and just stuff to it that sticks to it. And I'm just not a fan. Of course, I have two cats and a dog. Um, I just, it bugs me. It's not a deal breaker. Just know that, that that's kind of how the case operates. Uh, you can definitely put this in a pocket somewhere. You can get a leather case for it. I know that there are some other videos pertaining to the case out on YouTube, so you can search for that. Um, heck, if you had a 3D printer, you could probably print your own case for this. I'm sure in the future that might, you know, people will do that. Um, it's probably not a burning need right now for the light phone to people. I do think there are some issues with functionality with Bluetooth headphones. Uh, my AirPods, they don't allow me to pause podcasts and things, um, which isn't a deal breaker either. I think this is just kind of a growing pain thing that they are working on the most important features and then these are secondary things. So it's not a deal breaker, but you, it might be something that you can consider. I've, I've read where other people, if they have wired headphones, they seem to work sometimes depending on the brand. So, um, and I have not used it with wired headphones yet. So putting that out there. I don't know if this is really a con. Um, it's not really a con for me, but it might be for you if you use emojis. There really isn't an option for you to type in emojis and send them to other people. Um, it's pretty low on the priority list and they may never have that. I don't know if they will. Um, I have seen one emoji. I've had one person send me an emoji and I could kind of see it on my screen. So there is that. I don't know if it's a deal breaker for you, but just be aware at this time, th that's the situation. So one of the cons um, also has to do with one of my pros, which is contacts. So I follow the directions to get my iCloud contacts connected to my phone through iCloud and creating a special password for um, Apple for the light phone too. And I tried to make that work maybe four or five times. It just didn't work for me. I then just exported my contacts into a VCF file and uploaded it to the dashboard and it worked just fine. There are options if you run into problems with iCloud. One of the things that really scared me when I first got this phone this week, you know, I was on it quite a bit. I was calling people and able to text and just really just looking through the phone. And I found that my battery life was really kind of diminishing pretty quickly. 
and that really kind of made me nervous because I really loved not having to charge my flip phone all the time. It was really why I decided I needed a new phone in the first place because my smartphone, the battery is dying and not taking a charge as long and I was having issues that way and that's what catapulted me into this whole realm of cell phone life. And so um, I was concerned initially about that. I learned that if you turn off the Wi-Fi function as well as the GPS when you're not using it, it actually can make your battery life last longer. And so it's been working just fine. And I, the jury is still out on how long it will last, but I think your battery life can last one to two days on this phone. That's something I may have to test a little bit more, but if you're not using it, if you're not on it all the time or making a lot of phone calls, it will obviously last longer. So keep that in mind. Um, it's really no different than any other smartphone and it has a smaller battery. So it's just par for the course um, with phones in this day and age and probably trying to keep this small and light. It really isn't a big deal to carry a charge bank with you if you know you're gonna need something like that. We're gonna talk about type again. I think it's really easy to read this phone, but if you are in desperate need of readers or glasses or what have you, you might find the type small, but honestly, I don't really think it's any smaller than my iPhone. So it, for me, it's a non-issue. Of course, I wear eyewear already, but um, I think some people have, I've seen people comment on that. It's really not a lot different than any other cell phone. You just can't zoom in. So if you need readers, maybe you just need to go to the drugstore. One thing that I did notice when I first got the phone was when I was trying to enter in my email, I had some issues with the numbers and typing on the phone where it wouldn't necessarily take. Uh, I found that if I just put the phone on a table and typed in the letters, it was easier. Um, and I only had it really happen that one time. I really enjoy that there is a little vibration when you type in a letter. I think you can turn that off, but I like to keep it there because I know that it's working. Well, initially a con might be for you the cost of this phone. We're looking at $300 to $350 for this phone and that might be prohibitive for you if you're really strapped. Although, if you're looking at getting a smartphone, it's a lot less than a smartphone. Uh, you might have to come up with that money up front and you can't absorb it into your monthly phone bill. But I do think if you use the Light Phone 2 uh, phone services, you get a break on the equipment itself. So that is an option. I think it's a small price to pay for something that's going to last and um, not extrude more money from you through advertising and that like. So keep that in mind. It could be a deal breaker for you. It's really not a con for me, but you know, I don't know if I've honestly saved much money transitioning from a smartphone to these dumb phones, which you know, I, I would hope would be the case initially. But for me, my peace of mind is worth a whole lot of money and it's totally worth it to me. <laughs> so uh, another con might be, I've had some dropped calls in my office, which actually is in my basement. So I'm not really sure why that was happening. Um, it's just happened a couple times and might require me just to come upstairs. It could be an annoyance in the future if it continues to happen, but I really haven't had too much trouble that way. I actually have been on the phone quite a bit this week um, and it's been really seamless and I've been able to hear people really well. Another con might be, uh, I was actually talking to my husband on the phone and all of a sudden he couldn't hear me and I'm thinking, oh no, what's going on? Well. I think I brushed the phone with my cheek or something and accidentally muted myself for a moment. And so I don't know if that's a con. I don't know how many people are really using the phone like this. It is small. And so if you put it right against your head, you might touch the surface of it and touch a button. Um, it's, but most of the time I'm using this thing with headphones, so it's been kind of a non-issue. 
Another con that I have that I feel like I need to investigate a little bit more is this phone has a backlight on it that is automatic. It has a sensor on the front that uh, determines whether the light comes on or not. I've had it where it hasn't come on in the middle of the night and I've tried to kind of look at the phone to see what time it is. Um, it could be that I was just impatient or it just wasn't working. You can set that feature to just be automatically on all the time if you want to. For me, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I have a, an alarm clock with a light that I can touch that will turn on that I can see um, a light. It, I, I need to look at that a little bit more and kind of figure out why that is happening, what's causing it. It could be a software thing or it could just be a me thing. I don't know. And lastly, on our con list is, you're gonna have to wait for this phone, at least I did, and I don't know if the company can do anything about that. When I ordered my phone, I knew that phones were coming in June, and I ordered it April 30th, so it arrived on June 22nd. Um, I'm not a very patient person by nature, so I was just so excited to get this phone and really get rid of this flip phone that I was chomping at the bit to get it. You know, if they have these phones in stock, maybe you won't have to wait to get it. And it really isn't an issue with the company itself because frankly, supply chain issues that are happening in the world right now and patience is just required. So I don't know if it's really a con, but if you're plan for that and if you have success otherwise, well, that's great, that's great. That ends the pros and cons list. I wanna discuss some other thoughts that I had as I was thinking about this video when it comes to making this transition to a future phone or a dumb phone as we're calling them. Um, one thing that I did uh, when I got my flip phone after I'd had it for a while was I got an address book and a password book. Of course you don't have to do this. I chose to do this because it just was making my life a lot easier. The functionality with the smartphone just was a pain, the interface, all of it, just time consuming to, to get to. So I chose to do that and I found that I really liked having the phone book and the password book for easy reference. And I come from a time when we had Rolodexes and I loved my Rolodex. So this kind of harkens back to that, but it has it's convenient and I appreciate it myself. One of the things that I found as a benefit of getting rid of my cell phone is that I really have been able to dictate my availability to clients and friends. The thing that I find um, that has happened in my business life is I'm kind of a people pleaser and I like to get things off my plate. So when clients call me, I've had clients and friends, they're contacting me on the weekend and off hours to do work for them. And I've learned through this flip phone transition to really value my time and set parameters and boundaries with other people to say, I'm happy to do that for you on Monday or I'm happy to, to give you a call in the morning. And that's just a personal thing for me, but I found that's a real benefit that I'm able to kind of mentally shut things off a little bit more. It's really hard when you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, small business, you never really stop working, but I'm hopeful and I know that by making this transition, I will be able to have more control of my time and really have days off and away from work and work distractions. My mom always said this about phones and it just applies today. The phone is for your use. So you can respond to text messages and phone calls, messages, when it is convenient for you. I think the smartphone culture has made us just feel like we have to respond right away and we expect people to respond right away. And the truth is you don't have to do that. And if people respect you and your time, they understand that. So the phone is for your use. Another thing that I have found, because I'm not on Instagram as much or other social media, I'm still on them. I still have my old smartphone and an iPad, of course, but I'm shopping less. So uh, that instant gratification or you seeing something and then immediately purchasing it is a lot less. And I 
I think that's really important. I think we can be more mindful about um, our shopping habits. And of course, I, I like to shop like anybody else, but I've noticed I'm just not available because I'm just not seeing it. Also, the other thing that I am actually enjoying right now is going to the store and shopping for things and being out in public. I mean, life in the last two years, we've basically been homebound and ordering stuff online. It's kind of nice to get out and just have an experience out of the house and see other people and just be in the real world. Of course, I've talked about it, but the benefit of not being on Instagram as much is definitely uh, affected me. Instagram is my time kryptonite, and so I, I'm not on it nearly as much. I'm not posting on it as much. And as they are ramping up their reels and things like that, you know, I'm still doing some of those things. It's just not this anxiety that I feel that I have to do for my business to be relevant. I really am much more interested in creating valuable content and creating good work and putting it out there when it's convenient for me and not being dictated by something else, someone else, what I kind of need to be doing. For me, it is a tool that I use for myself to market myself or to share my work. And that's what it is. It's not a lifestyle. It's not a, a need to do. It's a tool. So I feel like it's putting it back in its place where it belongs. Okay, and finally, like another benefit here is that it allows for daydreaming. And we don't do that enough in our lives. And it's really our brain's way of kind of freeing up space, I think. And when you're always constantly being entertained, you're not allowing yourself to do that. And it really is quite enjoyable and necessary, I think, at times. Maybe free your mind and do a little daydreaming. Some struggles that I've had here as I've transitioned to this um, feature phone is that I noticed my gym membership runs through an app that is on my smartphone. Now I still have my smartphone and it runs like an iPod, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. And I have to have that to check in. And I've thought about printing it out, which we probably can do maybe. Uh, but I finally just approached my gym and said, hey, look, I'm transitioning from a smartphone to this analog kind of style phone. Do you have a card that I can use with my keys to just scan? And they let me have one, which was awesome. They, I think they're not really pushing or promoting that. To just be able to have that card, it's great. I never thought that would be a struggle with removing the smartphone, but... There you go, there's something to think about. Of course, if you use your smartphone for online uh, bookkeeping or banking or timekeeping, this, it might be hard. The transition might be hard for you. I actually have moved to a completely analog system for my timekeeping, and honestly, I keep better time with it because when I sit down at my easel, I grab that timekeeping sheet and I just write it down. It's kind of a whole process of the painting process that I do. And so it might be something that you run into. You might find that you enjoy doing some more analog things to just be present and to really keep better track. I don't know. And one of the biggest frustrations, I think moving from a smartphone to the flip phone at least, was that it was really unsafe to drive with. And so I think if you are trying to make the decision between the light phone and a flip phone, my flip phone never really connected to my car. I never knew if it was gonna work with my car or not, if I would be able to make calls through my car, hands-free or not. It, I could never figure out what the dynamic was to make it work. And so it was, for me, very unsafe. And I've been doing a lot of traveling by car here lately. So this has also been another benefit of moving to the light phone too. I can tell you it's working really well with my car. I was having some issues with that connectivity with my car initially, and um, I re-added my car, and every time I get in my car and I start my car, it makes this little tone to let me know that the light phone too is connected, and then I can actually use it to make phone calls, and it's a lot safer. And that is exactly what I want. I think it's something you have to consider if you're trying to decide between a flip phone 
and this light phone to maybe your car is newer. I have a 2016 car. Uh, just to have that hands-free feature to me was a really big deal, uh, but it might be something to consider. Maybe your car will connect better than mine did, but it can be also be an issue when you're first getting your light phone hooked up. Don't despair, I think you can make it work. They're, they're continually working on this Bluetooth connectivity, and I can see that in their Discord forum, so just keep that in mind. Lastly, I think I'm really lucky to be able to be transitioning from the flip phone to the light phone too. I think it's offered me a perspective that you might not see as you're perusing some of these videos here on YouTube. There are a ton of great videos that talk about the light phone too that might even be a lot shorter than this one, but um, I hope that you got something out of this video that maybe you haven't seen somewhere else. I am really excited to embark on this Light Phone 2 journey. I think it's really going to be life-changing for me, and I think that's the whole point of this phone. Um, it's not always easy, and it can be a little frustrating, but I think it's well worth it, especially in the coming years. A lot has changed in the last 15 years, 20 years, as far as cell phones go, and I only see that changing more in the future. And I think if you're spending a little more time being mindful and uh, finding some joy in your life outside of looking down at a little little box in your hand, in your pocket, you're gonna be better off for it and you're gonna be happier for it. Stay tuned for my third video that will come out in a few months. I'm gonna live with this phone for a while and really be able to give you a true picture of how it has worked in my life um, and what that looks like. Again, if you're making this transition, let me know in the comments how it's going and share this video with anybody you think might benefit from it. I appreciate you being here and taking the time to hang out with me. If you wanna learn more about me or my channel here, you can obviously see all these art videos here or you can go visit ihavegumption.com to check out some of my stickers and when I'm having live classes and painting classes. Stay creative out there.